Hello and welcome to What's In It For Africa, the Inside The Issue episode with me, Uzo Madhu. It's the start of a brand new year and we're going to look into the EU's political priorities in 2016 and also seek to understand what African leaders want from them. So we headed down to the Council of Ministers meeting for the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states and we asked African leaders what should the EU's political priorities be for 2016? Um, I think uh, the, the main priority for, uh, for the EU uh, would be in 2016 of course, would be uh, to uh, address the security and migration issues and that is, uh, that is fundamental I think uh, because uh, it's obvious the, the, uh, the threats that, uh, uh, that the EU is, is facing uh, right now um, has everything to do with migration and, and security and I, li I would like to link migration and, and, and security with development Right. Um, it is important to to address the root causes, you know, of insecurity, and the root causes of insecurity leads to migration. As I said. If we are able, if the EU is able to work with the with us, uh, with the regions, with individual countries, I think uh, that would go a long way towards addressing. Uh, these, this, this major uh, priority, which is a major concern uh, for Europe. So it is important that uh, we look at what we have achieved during the Millennium Development Goals and then now going into a new era of the Sustainable Development Goals. And then also for the ACP, we have the Cotonou Agreement, which is ending in 2020. So again, the UN uh, 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 development goals, which are sustainable, will just move into this uh, starting of the new era after the Cotonou Agreement. So we are looking at the European Union uh, with their support uh, to the development uh, of Africa, Asia, and Latin America. But I would say that at the level of Africa, there is a des priorités et les priorités sont d'abord celles qui concernent les bases du développement. Nous avons besoin au niveau de l'Afrique des infrastructures de base pour soutenir euh, le développement économique. Il y a un déficit très important en termes de routes, en termes d'énergie, en termes de télécommunications, en termes d'eau. Je pense que ce sont les bases. Il faut également aider l'Afrique ou le groupe ACP à pouvoir transformer ses produits. D'où la nécessité de l'industrialisation de l'Afrique. Ce qui permettra de donner une plus-value à ce que nous produisons. Donc cette plus-value, cette transformation, naturellement, va créer des emplois va également toucher d'autres questions transversales comme la question de la, du chômage, l'emploi des jeunes euh, et euh, également l'autonomisation des femmes. Donc si nous avons une euh, possibilité euh, de produire, de transformer, de donner plus de value euh, à ce que nous produisons, cela aiderait sincèrement à asseoir euh, l'économie africaine et à pouvoir également lui donner euh, plus de valeur quand on exporte. Il y a également la question euh, de, 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 de développement des ressources humaines. Nous avons euh, quelque peu négligé ce genre d'aspect, mais pour bâtir des, 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 des États, il faut des ressources, des ressources humaines. La question de la formation et aussi de la formation professionnelle euh, est tout à fait indispensable. Je pourrais peut-être également euh, dire qu'il faut euh, penser à pouvoir renforcer également les échanges intra-ACP. Parce que l'accès au marché étant de plus en plus euh, limité, également avec l'ouverture des marchés, 
Nous avons besoin également pour asseoir notre économie et notre développement, penser également à développer les commerces intra-ACP. Donc voilà quelques priorités liminaires euh, en ce qui concerne euh, les, 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 priorités, les, les priorités dans le cadre de notre coopération avec euh, l'Union européenne. Et cela veut dire que nous avons besoin de développer les secteurs privés qui est en fait euh, le, le, le secteur qui contribue le plus euh, au développement de nos économies. Donc euh, voilà quelque peu ces éléments que je pourrais vous livrer. Merci. Je vous remercie. Le Gabon est, est un pays membre du groupe ACP. Le Gabon croit beaucoup en ACP et euh, aujourd'hui nous sommes à quelques années de la fin de notre relation, surtout de l'accord de Cotonou qui nous lie à l'Union européenne, c'est-à-dire euh, en 2020. Et nous n'allons pas attendre les bras croisés, c'est pour cela que nous voulons, nous voulons être visibles et nous pensons déjà à cet avenir des ACP. Oui, je voudrais surtout parler de la République démocratique du Congo. Euh, il est vrai que le partenariat euh, entre l'Union européenne et la République démocratique du Congo ne date pas d'aujourd'hui. Euh, depuis 2014, euh, ils ont signé un programme euh, euh, dans divers secteurs. Euh, il y a euh, un contrat financier euh, de l'ordre de 620 millions euh, pour la période allant de 2014 jusqu'à 2020, notamment hein, pour la gouvernance, la gouvernance euh, qui inclut aussi les questions sécuritaires, la défense, etc. Il y a la santé qui est prioritaire euh, pour nous, pour le gouvernement de la République euh, euh, du Congo. Il y a les infrastructures euh, qui sont très importantes pour nous, les routes, notamment la route qui relie euh, de, allant de l'ouest jusqu'à l'est, euh, à l'Afrique australe. Il y a également le problème de l'environnement qui est aujourd'hui un problème majeur pour la sauvegarde de, de, de l'humanité. Donc voilà, grosso modo, le programme qui sera mis entre euh, l'Union européenne et la République démocratique du Congo. Et il ne peut pas, de toute façon, par principe, il ne peut pas avoir des développements sans la paix. Mm -hmm. Donc il faut régler d'abord le problème de défense, sécuriser les populations, que la pays, le pays soit en paix pour qu'on puisse avoir une politique claire et nette en matière de développement. Bien entendu, euh, la République démocratique ayant... Euh, beaucoup de voisins, neuf voisins, nous sommes obligés de coopérer. C'est pourquoi nous sommes aussi dans ce qu'on appelle euh, dans les blocs régionaux. Nous sommes avec Comessa, nous sommes avec la SADEC, nous sommes avec euh, la CEMAC. Donc euh, notre position géostratégique fait que nous sommes obligés de coopérer avec les autres pays. So development and migration seem to be key issues raised by the African leaders that we spoke to. And understandably so, both have been high on the EU political priorities in 2015. We know that over 750,000 migrants came to Europe by sea last year, but also that the European Union created a 1.8 billion African trust fund to tackle the root causes of migration. And in terms of development, the Sustainable Development Goals were agreed in 2015. Now, these go even further than the previous Millennium Development Goals in seeking to eliminate rather than reduce poverty and disease. And because the EU is the biggest international donor of aid to Africa, this is a key policy area in terms of the EU-Africa relationship. But this is not all of it. In terms of development and migration, both of these issues do not have a firm, legally enforceable basis. So, let's look ahead at 2016 at the market-shaping policies still to come. On the trade side, negotiations and the approval of economic partnership agreements between the European Union and African regional um, organisations will continue throughout 2016. Now, these agreements will actually characterise the trade relationship between the EU and African regions for decades to come. Not only that, in 2016 we will see that political discussions around the legal relationship between the African, Caribbean and Pacific group of states will intensify after the conclusion of the public consultation at the end of December last year. 
In the commodities area, the EU will end its production quota on sugar in 2017. Now this means that the European Union will go from being a net importer of sugar to being a net exporter. Now African countries such as Swaziland, Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe to name a few would actually lose their preferences to access the EU market to sell raw sugar and will also be faced with fierce global competition on the sugar market. Therefore, 2016 is an important year for those African countries who are affected to either work with the local, national or continental market to sell back their sugar at a good price. For example, Swaziland is increasing its production capacity to sell back to the African Customs Union. African countries affected could also consider working more closely with the European Union and trying to weather the implications of this ending of the quota system because the EU is a premium priced market for sugar. EU legislation on conflict minerals is due to be adopted in mid-2016. This legislation sets out that EU importers of tin, tantalum, tungsten and gold need to verify that these minerals come from legitimate sources and are therefore not fueling human rights abuses and conflicts in particular regions, in specific the Great Lakes region. In terms of energy, the European Union is seeking to um, strengthen its legal compliance checks when it enters into energy purchasing agreements with non-EU countries. And this proposal will be made this year. Now, Sub-Saharan Africa is actually one of the most unexplored regions in terms of oil and gas. However, discoveries continue to be made. Off the coast of East Africa, 5 trillion cubic metres of natural gas have recently been found and also Nigeria is exploring the strong possibility or likelihood of the presence of hydrocarbons and gas just off its shores. Now on to agriculture. EU member states need to implement revised rules on biofuels by 2017. The new legislation wants to move away from food-based biofuels and increase the production of those produced from waste or plants. The reason for this is that the EU has some environmental concerns about the credentials in terms of environmental impact of food-based biofuels, but also the ethical concerns around using food for fuel. Now, several African countries, including Nigeria, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Mozambique, have increased food-based biofuels production in their countries due to EU policy. This is because EU policy mandates that their renewable energy target should be made up of a percentage of biofuels. So therefore, in 2016, it will be important for African countries to discuss with individual EU member states to ensure that they can weather the storm that is about to hit due to a change of biofuel policy. So that's it for this episode. As you've heard, there are plenty of issues on the EU's agenda for 2016. And with the helping hand of the What's In It For Africa team, we will guide you through these and much, much more in 2016. Thank you for watching Inside The Issue. Until next time, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like our Facebook page. It's been a pleasure. This is What's In It For Africa with me, Uzo Madu.